ಸ್ಥೂಲವು So we are going through Kitab al of Udur. So the, the bits that we have covered so far, just a quick recap is that it has to be Ijab and Qubur for anything to be sold. And the buyer or the seller has two khayar, two choices, two reasons for which they can nullify the contract. Once the contract is done, it has to be fulfilled. It has to carry on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, When you come to a contract, fulfill it. Let it continue till the end. Means you do not have a choice to annul it for any good reason, without any good reason. But the, the reasons are, there are two main ones, which is khayari and khayari ru'ya means a choice when you find a defect in that item which was expected to be there something that hasn't happened when it was in your possession and second is khayari ru'ya you didn't see it before you just accepted something for a specified amount yet you never knew you didn't see it when you looked at that you didn't like it but if you've seen it before then that choice is gone and third is if you put a condition, both parties can put a condition whereby they say, you know what, I would rather have a choice of returning it back for three days if I find someone who is more knowledgeable of the topic of the deal and he suggests that I haven't got a good deal. So it means I'm not aware, I don't know how much is it worth, but I think it's okay, it looks okay to me, but I'm not expert, I want to get a second opinion on this. So can I just take this mobile phone for 200 pound, you bet give me three days to return it back if need be. It means I would just ask someone who is more qualified to respond to that. Anyway, so then there were a few things that we mentioned one can have uh, and bayata'ati uh, was the thing that keep in your mind bayata'ati, when you do not do any ijab or qubul, you do not say anything, they do not propose and the other party doesn't accept, yet the bayah is done. That's the exceptional circumstances, but it has become a norm now, whereby things are found in the cabinet, in the shelf. You look at that, the specified amount, a specified price of that written there, 500 kilograms of rice for this much pounds. You just saw it, you took it, put the money there, maybe even without having an individual just through your card, but it's without ijam and qubur. That's called bayta'ati. This is what happened in, in modern times. So that's that's fine as well, actually, because it doesn't lead to any dispute. So as long as there is no dispute, and provided that this is within the Sharia boundary, otherwise you may say that even with, in a river transaction, there's no dispute. So, no dispute and nothing haram in there, then that transaction tends to be okay. And most of the time, a halal transaction, which is bay and shira, buying and selling, there is the guarding or the main guiding principle is that it would lead to altercation, debate, argument, fight, disputes. And Sharia doesn't want that. Sharia wants things to be smooth, nicely done, no ill feeling towards each other. Otherwise the society, the very fabric of society will be torn apart and you don't want that. There has to be brotherhood. There has to be some love, compassion, concern for each other at a human level, minimum. Ideally, better than that. So much more closer to that. So there has to be some muwalat, some love, some you know brotherly uh, family type relationship. So you, you are my brother, have it, and then, you know, no one is there to con someone. Rather, everyone is trying to help. And ad dinun nasiha dictates that. And that is why having goodness and goodwill for everyone, sincerity for everyone, that is the, the essence of Sharia. 
Imam Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jarir al-Bajari, the Sahabi, the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked his slave after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away during his time. He asked his slave to go and get me a horse. He wanted to buy a horse. So the men went out. He bought a very good horse, a good deal for 500, 500 dirham then. The Imam Sahabi, Jarir ibn Abdullah, Abdullah al-Bajali, radiallahu ta'ala. He accepted Islam in the last few years of Rasulullah sallallahu life in Medina. And he was leader of his tribe and he became so much beloved to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he said, never did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa looked at me and I looked at him and he didn't smile. Except that he would smile. He would always smile every time he looks at me or when you see each other, he would smile. Many a time you don't do that. You don't do all the time. His connection with Rasulullah sallallahu was such. Jarir was very, very handsome, very beautiful. And he was very, you know, Sharia wise, all the Sahaba were fantastic. But he came quite late into Islam, and then he just, since he was leader, Islam, Islam, those who were good in their ignorance, time of ignorance, when they come to deen, they become good as well. They just try to excel in everything because they are just by nature excellent people. So he was like that, his tribe and everyone. He would just try to go to the, to the. but he was, despite being leader, couldn't even mount a horse. He would find it difficult to mount a horse. Till he came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him and he became so strong that was, there was no problem. He became like an automatically, just with that dua as a miracle, miraculous dua. So this Sahabi, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he said that I took bay'ah with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muslim, that I would be sincere to every Muslim. He's just so amazingly attached to this contract that he had with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he asked the slave, his, you know, his worker of some sort, just go and get me a horse. So he, he bought a horse. And he said, this is 500 dirham. So Jareed looked at that and said, it looks much better than 500. You know, get the men, got the men back into the, you know, this is actually very good. You should ask 600. He said, oh, fine, this is your horse, up to you. If you want to give me 600, I'm happy with that. And they looked around and said, oh, I don't think six, this should be 700 actually. And then finally, 800 got accepted. They said, you know what? I'm happy for you to have 800. This is yours and horse is mine. But if you ever feel that you haven't got a good deal, please come back to me and I will return it back. But I still think that perhaps I'm not giving you the best deal. I mean, <laughs> so he said, I'm very happy with this. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. But for him, it was so much of a concern that you know I would rather that you get the benefit and not me. So he, he was always on, on that at that level. So that's so amazing. This is this is the way Sahaba when they are there, they have taken something on board, they would just stick to it, no matter what. So we just take it literally with their side tooth. <laughs> they wouldn't let you know their, their, their jaw stick with that. Anyway, so this is this is the way the believers should be when they have contract, no hard feeling, no any intention towards anyone else. So anything that would lead to that, Sharia would not generally allow. That's a principle behind all the transactions. So any anything that would lead to lead to a dispute is not good. Mufdi ila niza, something which leads to niza, a dispute. So the book carries on. So if you sell something, a food, food of any type, barley, wheat, grains, rice, raisins, whatever, all the seeds, any seed, you can just easily sell it either by measuring it. So there's a way of measuring, there are four ways actually. One is that you have a pot with identified or specified value in it. The volume is known. So volume is known. It's called mukayala, the kail. So you know, as, as not here, but in, in, in our country, in many countries actually, in India and in Pakistan, you will see even Bangladesh, you will find people selling milk with the kail. So they would have big tub of milk 
And if you ask for two liters of milk, they would just have a specified, you know, bucket of some sort, a, a sort of, you know, mug. They would just take it out, and they know this is about 500 mil. One, two, three, four, done. Two liters. Everyone is agree with that. So that that's called kail mukayala. So we can sell it like this, with regards to the seeds and grains. We can do mujasafatan, uh, with you know. Without measure, like you know, andaze se, atkal se, idea. So I think this is this much is okay. That's okay as well with wheat, with grains, with those sort of things. And why that is, I will explain in a second. And if there was a pot that we don't know, there's a pot. They would say, I will sell you this much, whatever is in this pot. It would just come about that much. Ten of those. Each of these, or one of these, or everyone, you know, each pot is about 10, 10 dirham or 10 pounds. So you say, okay, I don't know. I can see what it is. Don't know how much, but I'm happy with that. That's okay as well. But for these things, grains, wheat, rice, and you could just weigh it against a scale. So you put an identified rock, piece of rock, stone there, you know, but, but they don't do that. Yeah. Typical, you put that on one side and just scale it. There's no more scaling. The way you put them on the scales. Okay, all, all is fine, provided that is standardized. Doesn't, you know, doesn't keep, every time you move it up and down, it loses some of its weight. Like it's, it's not, it's like a mud or something. No. It has to be a solid something which doesn't change its weight. Why? Because this concept, there are certain things that has asl and then something which is there was. Asl is the essence. If you remove it, if you take some of it out, it doesn't affect the thing. Thing remains as such. It doesn't give any damage to the origin. So original stuff is original if it doesn't cause any defect if you cut it out, if you take some of it out. So if you have you know, a kilo of rice and you take a handful out of it, does the rice get, get defected? No. The rice remains rice, still okay. Wheat remains wheat. You can take some of it out, it doesn't change the nature it doesn't cause any defect in it. Unlike a piece of cloth, if you cut it, keep cutting it, would you get that? The piece of cloth remains, no, it's not. It's just damaged every time you cut it, every time you keep cutting it to whatever level, it's useless. You can't use it anymore after some time. Maybe if you cut it big, then you may need to do a bit more, you know, whatever. But generally, a piece of Land likewise, if you keep it cutting, it is useless. You know, you do not want this big patch, patch of rug, say. It's, a, it's not, no use to me. So rug is rug, or carpet is carpet. It has to be this size, otherwise there's no, no point keep cutting it. So you can't keep cutting it. And that's the difference between asl and was. The original something, the essence of the being, and the attribute. So what we pay for is against the asal, not the was. So keep that in mind. Anyway, so now you sell a kafiz, for example. Kafiz is a big, like, you know, it's like a ton. A big pile of wheat, rice, grains of some sort. So you sell this big pile for one dirham. And this big pile, has maybe 20 kilos, 15 kilos, 30 kilos, you don't know. And you don't know and you don't specify it. Then you say for each, for each kafiz, I want you to give me one dirham or one pound. So according to Imam Hanifa, it will only be valid for one kafiz. 30, 40 different 50 kafiz sitting there. Yeah, all those, Kilos, so 50, keep it as kilos. 
if you had 50 kilos, don't know how many, but many kilos, more than 10, 15, 5, 7, however many, many kilos sitting there, you don't know how much, and you do not know, you know, how much would that amount to. But you know, one kilo is for five pounds. So you say, one kilo, five pounds. But you say, each of that, each kilo is five pounds from this lot. So Imam Hanifa says you can only have it for one kilo. The deal is only done with one kilo of that. Why? Because rest is unknown and the kill value is unknown. That would lead to a problem in the future. Sahiban, the two students of Imam Abu Hanifa on the other hand, he said, it's fine. It's fine. You can do it. For Imam Sahib, it has to be measured there and then. You can't just do it. You have to measure it and specify so it doesn't lead to any trouble afterwards. The Sahib said you can do it even after the contract is done, but, then, but you have to do it within the majlis. Before you leave, just measure it. So as long as you both agree on that, that will be fine. Okay? As long as both parties are happy and they measure it there and then before they finish. But in the same majlis. Imam Hanifa said you can't have the contract. It has to be the contract has to be done with the knowledge of the measure, exact measure. Okay. Like was said, uh, if someone wants to sell a flock of you, this, you know, all of these sheep are yours. Each goat or each sheep is for 100 pounds, whatever. Imam Sahib said it's all invalid. Not even for one. Everything is in. You can't sell it like that because you don't know, number one, how many are there. So it's majhul. It's not known. Second, each of them, now you could say why not even for one. Unlike the kafis thing, because kafis is a standard. Is sheep a standard? Do all sheep look alike? Are they all similar weight? So Imam Sahib said, you know, if I say that I sell this, all of this against this money for each of those, that would be completely invalid because even if you say for one, at least for one, then which one? He would want to take the biggest one and you would want to sell the thinnest one. So that, that doesn't solve the purpose. Again, it would lead to problem. Means what we're saying that do not do a deal like this. Specify the goat, specify the sheep, and then sell it because they do not come all in one shape and size and what not. They're all different. Each sheep is different. Even twin are different with, their, with regards to their weight. So when there is a problem, because everyone will, I, I want this one and not that one. Yeah? They are not standardized, unlike the grains. They are all standardized. See, that, that is why there, there is this difference. Anyone yeah, because if it's, if, it's, if you're really happy with that, he has taken this one in front of you, that's fine. So it has to be done there and then. So if anyone, okay, I took this one, yes, yeah, fine, that's okay. That's okay. We say, oh, let, you give me 100 pounds and take, take anyone whenever you want. So I'll come tomorrow. I'll take anyone. Specify something now. Otherwise, it would be a problem. You know, he would say, yeah, I said from this flock, that flock, that, that big one actually came from there to here. No, 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 but I, I saw him here. No, 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 it was actually, you know, there'll be a debate, an argument, which cause problem because you either cancel the contract or if you carry on, either you feel that I've been dodged or he would feel that I've been dodged. Because he may be right that she might not belong to this, flock you saw it yesterday but it was uh, accidentally came in this one when they were closing the wall so sometimes they just go ahead and they, and they don't listen to anyone do they sheep so the, the, this big one actually came so he put all of them according to him they're all you know one year old one and they're all similar i'm not too bothered about that so i'm happy for each of them to be for 50 pounds so what, what you saw there was one quite big one and you knew that that's better than all of them and your eyes literally fell on that one you won that one. he didn't know he realized that you know this is my normal standard practice and accidentally that one came and jumped over or someone accidentally let but he would not let you have that one because he he's going to be at loss 
and you would think that you have done the right thing and he would think that he's done the right thing. That's why it would lead to problem. So any potential problem, cancel it, do a new contract, do there and then, make things a little bit easier. If it does happen, then how, how do you... Oh, nullify it. It's, it's invalid anyway. That contract was never done. So it means he had the right to say no. All it means in practical terms, you come the next day, you said, I, I wanted this one, that was the big one was there. And you, you took him out there. I said, no, no, he wasn't, he was never there. He was excellently there. He said, so he has the right to say no. Means a con because you know where we stand, the contract once happened, you cannot go back. You have to fulfill that contract. What we are saying, you this contract never took place. So if I say that no, not at all, I have the right. I can nullify it. You can't say, oh no, contract was done. You have to, you have to let me have this. See that? But then you say, okay, fine. Cancel that one. I want this one. That's cool. okay. This is 150 actually. That's up to you. If you want to accept that big one, fine. You see what I mean? It's, it's all leading up to that. It's not saying that you can't sell or buy there, but do a new contract. It means you have the choices at that point. I was just wondering, isn't this also like sort of exercising the fact of fear for the work? Yeah, because you've not you've not seen the particular sheet that you wanted, but it's been delivered to you. Yes, yeah, similar, somewhat similar, but that, that, that is why, because in future when we cover the current thing, whatever is going on in the market, all of that would make sense. Oh wow, yeah, that that is the reason because it doesn't, you know, we don't have that. We haven't seen the thing, we don't know the actual value of it. So all that would lead up to problems. And then you could buy like that kind of payment is like 150. We don't know, we don't even see the yeah. So, so, so here, exactly. But the, here, we are not, we are not buying or selling. We have appointed someone as our wakil, and we trusted him. We say, You go and buy on our behalf. So, he would just go and buy a cow for you for 95 pounds, as we did this year in India somewhere, somewhere. 95 pound cow for seven parts in, in the suburbs between India and Bangladesh border. Uh, fine, it's quite cheap and it's slim and thin. We, we've seen their pictures. But we appointed them as our agent. They go deal with it and we trust them. They say 95 pound on average they've just put. So they're not dealing with us. They have just given us a specific value for that amount, for, the, for that animal. Okay, we are not buying it unknowingly. We have made someone our agent. Likewise, it's invalid if one sells clothes, a piece of cloth by the cubit, a zira. Each cubit for one dirham and does not nominate the complete number of cubits. You have to specify how many cubits are. Again, it was then when the piece of cloth would be different, and then zira is different from your zira to my zira. This is now standardized, it doesn't lead to much problem these days. Because now there are, it's just measured with a long you know, metal rod. So that's you know, a meter, a meter rod. You can just measure it through that. So that's easy. And clothes are just being made through a machine, which is standardized now. A piece of cloth is exactly the same throughout. Unlike then, when you are hand doing it, fix in more you know how good or high how bad so things would be different then so this is more practical now again according to imam abu yusuf and imam muhammad the two student rahimahumallah it is valid as long as you just count and measure then you know even if the contract is done but you are still sitting in the same majlis before you hand over something so remember remember what what we are saying about contract contract happens with ijab al qabul I propose you accept it done. Imam Sab said, before done, before it's done, you have to have that goal specified. Okay. So Hiban said, even if it's done, you still can measure it. Imam Sab said, no, it must be clear beforehand. He's more cautious about this. Now, if someone says a pile of food of wheat or what raisins or whatever for 100 dirham on the presumption that it is 100 coffees and each is then he finds that it's less than that so then the purchaser has a choice if he wants he may take whatever is there for the same amount 
and if he wants, he can cancel it. So he expected it to be 100 rupees for 100 dollars, 100 pounds. It turned out to be 90 rupees for 100 pounds. So he has a choice to accept all of that or not take all of that. Just reject it, cancel it. He has a choice to cancel it, but he can't say I would take 90 because I'll only give you 90 because I found it 90. No, because again, the, the actual value was not specified. It was a pile you could see. So he sold it, all of this pile. You assume it would be, it would be 100, or he suggested it may be 100, but I never weighed it. He said, this is the pile. I think this is about 100 fees, and you give me $100 for that. You agreed to it. You knew it. You should have asked him to measure it there and then, but you didn't. You trusted him. And he, he didn't die, but he just said that this is what I feel. It turned out to be 10 coffees less. So that's, you either refuse it all, don't take anything, but you can't then say, okay, nine coffees, you know, the 10 coffees, which is less, so 90 I would take, and I give you, or whatever is, is 90, so I'll give you 900, 90 pounds for that, 10 pounds I would keep. So you have to deal with the whole of it or leave all of it. If you find it to be more than that, then the excess is for the seller. Obviously, you have to return this, the, the, the more. But less is, that's up to you. Whoever buys a piece of cloth on the assumption that it is 10 cubits for 10 dirham, or buys land on the assumption that it is 100 cubits in length for 100 dirham, then find it to be less than that, the buyer has a choice. If he wants, he may take it in full, again, same way. Or he may just say, I don't want it because it is 10 less than what I expected it to be. He has a choice of taking all or none. It can't go in between, so, you know, because again, the, this is a was, was, you do not pay anything for was. That is why, if you understand that, it will become easier if you say that I am selling you gold for 24 carats, and there is, but my gold is. 28 carat or something, you know. So that's a was. A was is not taken into consideration. That is why you can't, you can't say, I am selling you one kilogram of ajwa kadu, ajwa dates, against your, you know, shukri, which is sukri or shukri, which is like, you know, not that good. So you do give me two kilos and I will give you one kilo. You can't do that. Because the was, which is the, the, the quality with regards to ajwa or non ajwa, that is not counted. It is the way, which is the measure for the thing. Okay. So, likewise, here. So, things do not, the was, you do not pay for. You pay for the weight, which is asal, the actual thing. Okay. If he finds it to be more obvious than he, than he, he, he is give the excess back to him. If a seller says, I have sold it to you, such that it is 100 cubits for the price of 100 dirham, each cubit being for one dirham. And if the buyer finds it less than that, then he has a choice. If he wants, he may take it off according to his share of the price, or if he wants, he may just leave it. Same thing. If, however, he finds it to be more, then he has a choice as well. If he wants, he may take it all or he may cancel it. If he says, I have sold it, it's all the similar thing, but the subtle difference come. I have sold this bale on the basis that it consists of 10 pieces of fabric, yeah? For 100 dirham, each piece of fabric being 10 dirham, then if the buyer finds them to be less than that, the sale is permitted according to its share. But if he finds them to be more, then the sale is invalid. Now that is important. This is slightly different scenario. So I'm, I'm giving you a big, you know, pile, a bale, a, a, you know, collection of few pieces of clothes, like a 10 of them. Each is 100. If I find it more, there were 11 there. Now, are the clothes all equal dresses? which are sold, different dresses. Again, remember, the, in the modern time, 
we can have exactly the same shirt made of made of from the machine. So it, it is not practical now, but traditionally the clothes are handmade. This one would be different to the other one. This is more expensive, most neatly done, very nicely done. This one is just uh, and there's some expensive, some less expensive. But I'm selling it all 10, but whatever. That would have been okay. But if it is more, then what would happen? You have to return one back to me. Which one would you return? The cheapest, the, according to you, the lowest of the category. Which one would I want? Exactly. Wouldn't that cause a problem? Yes. That's why this is invalid. Is that enough? You know what? Don't go there. Let's do again. Take one out. So I, as a seller, I would take this expensive one out or middle, whatever one out. Now deal with it. Then you say, okay, I want a bit of rebate there. Then give me 95. That's fine. If I agree, that's fine. New deal, new way. And there'll be no problem. Remember, it's all about not letting any ill feelings and, and causing trouble. Whenever someone sells a house, so you don't have this person. You can't say, oh, so, you know, I sold the house. I didn't sell the toilet. I didn't sell something which is, in essence, associated with that good. Likewise, if someone sells a piece of land and there are, you know, just for the, for the cultivation, there are many date farms there. So you say, oh, I actually sold the land, not the date farm. You can't do that. Why? That fertilized land or the land that is to be cultivated is, is known that these trees are going to be there. They don't come and go. They stay there for, for many, many years. Unlike a crop, a land with crop. So if there's a crop there, I've just grown some tomatoes and, and oranges or strawberries, and then I'm selling you the land, then I, I can say that I'm not selling you or I haven't sold that. That's separate. My crop is separate to the land. Why? Because I would just take it off. It doesn't stay there. So this is not part of the furniture. It's not part of the land. You see that difference? So there's a difference between the two. Date tree is different, or any tree which is going to be there for a long time, mango trees or whatever, they are there and they're not going to come off. Unlike the trees, oh, the, 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 the plants, the, the crop. So my fantastic, you know, green, lush green, you know, wheat that would become then yellow and then, you know, it's about to be you know, harvested. So I may or I may not sell you. So if I say I'm dealing with the land, I may mean both. So you, you, you need to clarify that. So whoever date palms and trees are within it, whatever are within it, they are included in the sale. Even if the seller doesn't mention them, but the crop are not included in the sale of the land unless it's specified. So by default, because the, 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 as you say, they're they are perishable. They're they, they something which is detachable. They will be taken off. A land, even if it's for cultivation, doesn't mean that there will be crop there. It can be, it might not be. If I sell a piece of land, then that might or might not be included. So you need to ask specifically. What I need to, so otherwise, I, haven't, I would say that, no, I didn't sell it with that. But when, when it comes to date trees and other trees, I can't say that. I can't say that these three belong to me. No. Date palm or tree upon which there's fruit now. The fruit is different. Fruit on the tree, that's not there all the time. That's not part of the land itself. Trees are part of land. Date, date fruit is not. And then I have to have a specific mention of that. I mean, just take it. So even if there are some fruits there, they're not, yeah, you sow it and you wanted it with those fruits, that's a different matter. Do deal with it and say that this is how I want. I want you to, you to sell me the tree, obviously trees are mine with the land, but I want you to send me the dates as well, the fruits as well. Then that should be part of the contract by mentioning it, not as a default. This is what they're saying. You can't have that as default. And if you don't want it, you say, okay, fine. In that case, take these fruits out straight away, ASAP. 
and then give them time to take it off, however time that much they, you think is appropriate. He said, three days, take your fruits out and be gone. This is my land, this is my tree now. I've given you price. So whatever time is, okay. practically possible. You also in five seconds, go and take your fruit. Obviously you can't do that. Yeah, give them decent uh, amount of time. Whoever sells fruit, irrespective of whether its ripening had begun or not, the sale is valid. And it is immediately incumbent on the buyer to pick the fruit. But if he stipulates that it must be left on the date farm or tree, the sale is still valid. This is called Budu with Salah. There's a big argument between Aima. So can you sell the tree with plant or with fruits on it? They're just, you know, on the in the wedding season. So they have got new, a lot of fruits coming up. Flowers have just been seen and the fruits started growing. They're very small. Can we sell it? There's a difference of opinion on that. According to Abu Hanifa, you can sell it. That's up to you. But you have to take your fruits away. You can ask them to take, unless the seller say, you know what? I would rather keep them there for this much period. And you can, you can agree, agree on that. Okay, so that's okay. It is not permitted for someone to sell fruits and at the same time exclude a specific measures of it. So that's another problem. You can't say, I am selling you all of these fruits with my date palm trees, but I would keep these 50 plants, the trees. So out of my thousand trees, all are yours, except for the, the fruits on these 10 or these 50 or these 100. You can't do that. You can't, you can't specify that because again, it would lead to problem. It would lead to many problems actually, because you know your trees better. Which trees are you keeping for yourself? The best ones. I don't know which one are you selling me. So I'm hoping that these trees would all give me that fruit. I can see that fruit. So I'm hoping to get a good harvest so I can sell and get some, some money out of it. I would just let them ripen in the next few weeks or months. But hey, you are clever. You know which one was the best one. You kept that for yourself and sold me the rest. And only after a month, I found out all your trees are growing fantastically. I'm looking after them as well. And this one, and you're happy, Bunny, and I'm just killing myself thinking, why did I do that? So it would lead to problem, ill feelings, yeah. It is permitted to sell wheat in its ear and legumes in its pot. Like, you know, you can sell it whichever way. <laughs> keys of the locks, yeah. <laughs> Don't say I, I didn't sell you the keys. Go and get your own keys. Inshallah, we'll leave that there. Inshallah, that will cover next time. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.